But first, every day, millions of parents put their children on buses for the trip to school. Statistically, buses remain the safest way to make that trip, but fatal accidents do happen. Just yesterday, an 11 year old boy died in East Texas when the bus he was riding on collided with another vehicle and rolled over. Special correspondent Lisa Stark reports that a record number of states are trying to improve school bus safety. Part of our weekly series, Making the Grade. Get in, put your seatbelt on, guys. This is a sight you rarely see on a school bus students buckling themselves in. You feel safe when you put your seatbelt on. A school bus transportation, we carry the most precious cargo, right? Chris Havazizadeh is the director of transportation for the Austin, Texas School District. Five years ago, the district decided every new bus it bought would come with lap shoulder belts at an extra $8,000 per bus, and not because there'd been an accident. We thought that, you know, we always ask our kids when they get in, in, inside the car, put on their seat belts. So to carry the culture inside of our school buses, it does add to additional safety. But most school districts have decided against adding seat belts. In Montgomery County, Maryland, buses carry 100,000 students a day, and there has never been an accident in which a student rider died. Buying new buses with seat belts would cost an extra $1 million a year. Transportation Director Todd Watkins says it does not make fiscal sense. Is that a tough position to take to try to explain to people? It is because when you're talking about anything that's involving safety, how can you be against it? And I'm not against it, I just don't think it is the best use of money um, right now because the safety is at such a high level on school buses as it is. 25 million children ride school buses every day. Accidents claim around five to six lives a year. Statistics show children are safer riding to school in a bus than with a parent. Those big yellow buses are the safest way for all of our kids to get to school every single day. The question is, can we make them safer? Mark Rosekind headed up the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA, under President Obama. That agency regulates school buses. Rosekind shocked school officials by advocating something no other NHTSA director ever had. Three-point seat belts should be the norm on all new school buses, because we're talking about trying to save every life. But districts argue they're getting a mixed message. There is no federal law requiring seat belts on buses. And NHTSA has concluded, quote, that large school buses without seat belts do not pose an unreasonable risk of death or injury. We do not find a safety need for a federal mandate. You don't need the government to tell you to do this. The technology is available now. Whenever there's a tragedy, such as the Chattanooga crash last November, which killed six children, there is always an anguished debate over seatbelts. It's so frustrating to me every time I see another accident. Allison Stews still bears the scars of her accident over a decade ago. She was traveling with her soccer team in a small bus chartered by her Texas high school, not built to school bus standards, but also without seatbelts. The bus swerved, and that's pretty much all I remember. The bus rolled on its side. Two teammates died. Three, including Allison, were seriously injured. She was partially ejected, her arm trapped under the bus. Yeah, Countless uh, surgeries later, full, she has limited use of her left arm. The way it's impacted my life and all my friends' lives, and um, not just the girls on the bus, but our in entire school was just um, turned upside down. Do you think if you'd had a seatbelt, it would have made a difference? Certainly in my injury and our type of wreck with the rollover, definitely think it would have made a difference. For decades, school buses have been designed to protect riders through something called compartmentalization. The seats are close together. The backs are high and they're padded. This helps keep the student in the compartment, if you will, during an accident. It works well during front and rear impacts. This crash test shows how unbelted students, that's these test dummies, stay in their seats after a frontal crash. But in this test, which simulates a rollover, very few of the test dummies stay put.
Students can also go flying in violent side impact crashes, as shown in this onboard video. These severe side impact crashes and high-speed rollover crashes are very rare school bus crashes. But when they do happen, we find that the children are vulnerable. LAP shoulder belts reduce that vulnerability, according to Kristen Poland. She's with the National Transportation Safety Board, which investigates school bus crashes. In this case, we had a single vehicle that left the roadway, impacted a pole, impacted several trees. This 2014 crash in Anaheim, California, injured the driver and nine students. No one died. This was the first crash where we had a school bus that was equipped with lap shoulder belts in all seating positions. Poland looked at what might have been if two of the more seriously injured students were wearing only lap belts. Here we have the occupants interacting with each other. Or no belts at all. In the unbelted case, we have our occupant that was seated along the aisle that's come all the way over and is now down on the floor. The lap shoulder belts are giving the greatest protection because they're keeping the body upright, keeping the occupant in the seating compartment, keeping the occupants away from each other. Only seven states have school bus seatbelt laws on the books, but Louisiana and Texas have not approved the funding, and Arkansas's law is brand new. There you go. Buckle it up. Even advocates will tell you installing belts alone isn't enough. A big challenge is ensuring students wear them properly or at all. Do you ever ride without it in the bus? Sometimes. Why is that? Because I feel like I, sometimes I forget to put my seatbelt on sometimes. But Allison says at least these students have an option. I didn't have the choice to sit there and buckle myself up to protect myself. Allison, with her dad and others, helped get the Texas school bus seatbelt law passed in 2007. They're still trying to get it funded. Ultimately, money is the biggest driver. Education dollars are scarce, and few districts believe it pays to have students buckle up. For the PBS NewsHour and Education Week, I'm Lisa Stark in Austin, Texas. Just really